In April of 2017, a Texas man by the name of Gufran Zafar Jesus. was convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison after shooting his wife, Asma Zafar, in front of their two young children. Asma? Asma. Like asthma. Yeah. I mean, spelled differently, but A A S M A. Oh, okay. okay. I would assume that's asthma. Okay. According to court documents, he had allegedly abused her physically and verbally uh, on prior occasions. She should have probably left a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. In July of 2017, a Utah man by the name of Kenneth Ray Manzanares. Why are these names always so difficult? Yeah, I know. He's charged with murdering his wife, Christy Manzanares, while on a cruise ship in Alaska. He allegedly told a witness that he did it because she wouldn't stop laughing at him. Oh. <laughs> and in August of 2017, a New Jersey man by the name of Greg Scott committed suicide after killing his wife, Kimberly Duffney, and seven-year-old son, Owen Scott. What a waste. I mean, why, why don't he just kill off himself and just off himself only? Right, so, instead of taking them with him? Yeah. Authorities say the man beat them to death after a marital dispute. Wow. Yeah. It's domestics. So we found, well, Mike found, an excellent article from A&E's True Crime blog mm -hmm. about husbands murdering their wives. And they talked to experts about what would drive a man to kill the person with whom they vowed to share a lifetime. Which if you watch ID Channel, you see it all on almost every episode. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we're talking about that article and more today on this episode of Two Murder Morons. This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and murder scenes. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce comedy while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. <laughs> Why are you making that face? I'm not making any face. Yeah. I'm just sitting here. You always do this like, no. what are we doing? No, no, no. Okay, well, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. My name is Andy. Sitting across from me is my good buddy, Mike. Mike, Mike, hey, what's up? Mike. Yeah, you figure it out. I keep wondering to see if you're going to figure out a different way to say yeah. it. Yeah. And you do every time. I, I try. Yes. Trying. But welcome to the show. Hey, welcome. Um, on this episode, we're talking about husbands who kill their wives. And yeah, we've all heard that. I mean, we've all said it. We, <laughs> I think almost, we, well, I think almost every guy's probably made that comment. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think in a joking, sarcastic oh, yeah, manner. Yeah, yeah, I don't think yeah. anyone, I don't no, think 98% of us are out here like, no, man, I no, really, no, I don't mean like that. I'm just saying, you know, you know, women drive us nuts, man. This is the way it is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's got that X factor that makes them, I don't know, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Like this oh, guy. Yeah, well, we know this yeah, guy. We all know this guy. This is a very famous mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Peterson there. But anyway, um, and we'll get into more details about the article, but this is an article that you found mm -hmm. on A&E's true crime blog, um, and it's entitled, Why Some Husbands Kill Their Wives. So uh, we're going to read some experts, experts, excerpts, Ex excerpts, if I can talk. Oh, geez. We're going to read some excerpts from this and be discussing this article. So... <clears throat> Here we go. The article goes out by starting, or the oh, article. Wait, 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 yeah. wait. Before we go that far, yeah, I think we should make. I think we should let people know some things first before we go that far. Oh, what's what do we need to let them know? Why don't you let them know what you always let them know? What What am I forgetting? Am I forgetting the format of our show? Yeah. What's happening? Well, you got to let people know that you know this is also. Uh, well, you do the honors. This no, time. no, 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 no. You hate it's, it. It's your thing. Okay. I could never step on your toe. If you are. <laughs> If you are listening to this on your favorite podcast platform, we are also a video podcast. So we will be discussing some photographs. We do have pictures of these husbands and their wives as we talk about them. So if you'd like to see those images or our bright smiling faces, you can watch our video podcast on either YouTube or Spotify. <laughs> there we go. Got it in. That's it. Oh, there's more though. There's oh, more. There is. If you're watching right now and you'd rather listen because you'd want to listen to us on your way to work or whatever, we're available on all the major podcast platforms. Yeah. 
that better? That's better. Pretty good. Got it out of the way. We should knock it out first thing. That's true. We should. Because we we're looking at a picture of a guy. That's true. We were right <laughs> looking at Peterson here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, these people are like these idiots. I'm never listening to yeah. the show. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Go to somebody else. So uh you want to jump right in? Jump. Let's, let's go. Let's Get her jump. done dead. Let's go. Most people are victimized by someone they know, mm -hmm. says Joseph Gia Cologne a professor in the Department of Law and Police Science at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Reputable yeah, school. Reputable school. In the case of spouses or partners killing each other, he says it's called, quote, intimate partner homicide. Yep. They really don't call it that, but yeah. Yeah. And it's generally the wife or girlfriend that gets murdered. Mm -hmm. According to research from the Center from Dise for Disease Control and Prevention, women are at far greater risk than men of being victims of intimate partner violence and homicide. It's true. I think that pretty much goes without saying. I mean, yeah. I mean, if, that, like I said, if you watch these shows on uh, ID channel, things like that, they're all mainly men killing their wives. It's uh, very rare do you get the other side. Right. FBI statistics from 2011 show that 82.6% of women murdered were killed by someone they knew. And when it comes to women above the age of 18 killed by an intimate partner, most, about 79%, were killed by a current partner, and 14.3% were killed by a former partner. Hmm. In 2015, there were 500 wives murdered by their husbands nationwide. 500. That's a lot. 500 wives I murdered know. by their husbands yeah. in one year. Yeah. Add another 500 for the girlfriends. Mm-hmm. So thousand, thousand women. Yeah. yeah. Um, forensic psychiatrist Dr. Park Dietz has provided expert testimony at high profile criminal cases, such as those of Andrea Yates, the Unabomber, mm -hmm. John Hickley Jr., Susan Smith, Joel Rifkin, and Columbine. So he's been an expert he's been, witness. Yeah, so yeah. With everything. He finds that there are four common motives behind intimate partner killings. Applicable whether they are gay or straight, married or common law, or partners who cohabitate. He says, quote, you have to understand at the outset that these don't necessarily occur in isolation and there could be more than one motive for the crime. And usually there is more than one motive. The first most common motive Diet sees is anger expressed in a pattern of escalating rage, abuse, and violence. Mm -hmm. He said, quote, this group has been violent before, and you can see it building up to this tragic ending. And, and most of the women involved in these cases have been warned to get out of it. Right. But they don't go. Right. And I think that's a whole nother topic to cover there. Like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, where you're holding on to mm -hmm. an abusive relationship. Yep. Because men do it, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that, that yeah. definitely goes uh, both ways. Um. He says that their violent anger may have occurred outside the home as well, resulting in a criminal record and other antisocial behaviors. Mm -hmm. Some of these men um, are, quote, full-fledged psychopaths. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. The next most common motive for husbands killing their wives, fear of abandonment and loss. I can see, yeah. So divorce. basically he's afraid she'll leave mm -hmm. for somebody else. So I think we're, what is this? The, if I can't have you, no one will yep. type thing. Pretty much craziness. So, uh, Diet says this usually occurs after she has threatened or attempted to leave the relationship an act that can be particularly dangerous for women who find their spouses controlling and abusive. Mm -hmm. He said that, quote, this group of men who kill because of a fear of being dumped have a personality style or disorder that's highly unstable and emotional, known as the borderline type. A third commonly seen motive is sexual jealousy. This includes everything from becoming upset that she flirted with someone mm -hmm. to knowledge of an actual affair. Yep. Or the way she's dressed or... Yeah. Just Whatever, something, jealousy. something stupid. Yeah. We've all, we've all known those guys. Oh, yeah. That you see how they're treating their girlfriend or spouse, and you're like, damn, dude. Like, Yeah, let it go. <laughs> going a little far with this. Yep. Um, Diet says, quote, his jealousy, or some would call it his sexual possessiveness of his partner as an object, is what underlies the homicide. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. A fourth reason a male partner kills his wife is that he's suicidal. This one's what's crazy to me. Like you were saying, just yeah, you know, just, just do, do it. yourself. Why you got to take that? Why take her the, or the kids? Just do yourself. Right. It just is such a. I mean, it's just such a waste. Well, what he's saying here is, as we go on further, the fourth uh, motive is suicide, where he plans to kill both of them, but oh, then yeah. they often chicken out when it comes to killing themselves. True. So they kill their wife. Yeah. And then when it comes to themselves, they they can't do it. Yeah. Some can. Some can't. Yeah. It just depends on, I guess, the level of craziness you're at. He's, Diet says when it comes to determining, determining motive, it is usually one of these four or some combination of the four. Mm-hmm. Um, Money. He, yeah. He divorce. said they show up in study after study in a U.S. and worldwide, um, you know, studies of yeah, this subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less common motives include collecting insurance, which we've, I mean, everyone's heard those cases. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. You know, you, the guy gets a ten million dollar policy on his wife, and three weeks later, she she's gone, falls down the yeah, stairs, yeah. Or, or she fell off the side of the cliff. Yeah, uh, mercy killing. So, the that's a whole nother topic yeah. we could do because I I kind of understand the, you know, if you're if you're up there in age and your spouse has terminal cancer or something and they're asking you, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, what do you do? What do you do? Um. Another one would be psychotic mental illness and replacing a wife with another partner. Oh, that means they're having an affair. Also known as solving the problem of alimony. Yes. That's what well, he calls it. Well, what it is is guys don't want to they don't want to go through the divorce. They don't want to lose their money. So it's cheaper to just, you know, well, I'll just get rid of her and keep and then that way I can bring my side girlfriend as my wife. Right. And they, it fails every time. <laughs> you know, I mean Right. No one's learning any. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like nothing's changed. <laughs> you know, it's they do the same thing, right? And, and they all get caught, right? You know, it, I don't know. It's just stupid. Yeah. Some kill their spouse because they think it's the only way they can win a custody dispute over children. Yeah, I can see that. The irony being, if they get caught, they lose custody. Yeah, and so, then the kids out two parents. Right. That's another one I don't understand. Is well, I want custody of kids, so if I kill her. Yeah. They'll come with me. Well, duh, if you get caught, you're going to prison. Your kids aren't going to be with you. Yeah, exactly. So uh, now you screwed the kid. Kid grows up all fucked up. Uh, Dietz here says that drugs and alcohol only fan the flames since they interfere with self-control and judgment. Mm -hmm. Said, quote, all the motives I've mentioned are more likely to result in a lethal action in the presence of alcohol and drug intoxication. Yeah. Makes sense. When it comes to solving these crimes... According to uh, Dietz, the boyfriend or husband is the first suspect on the list. Yep. Always. They, all, they yeah. always are. Yeah, always are. I mean. Or whoever they live with. Right. Whoever the, the partner. Yeah. The partner is. Yeah. They're or always the first on the list. Of course. And uh, when a female is murdered by her husband, the chances of solving it are very high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we see that all the time. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, uh, Dietz says, quote, as investigators, we build theories. Most people are murdered by someone they know. Mm-hmm. And if you see someone stabbed multiple times, that's also indicative of intimate partner homicide. Oh, yeah. Uh, the same goes for overkill when the force needed to kill someone is, you know, yeah, we, exceeded. exceeded. Who else could get you that angry? Yeah. Other than an intimate partner. Yeah. These are the first building blocks of an investigation. Also, we look at the location. Is it in the back bedroom? Who else do you let into that bedroom? This helps us develop theories. Yeah. This I mean, all seems yeah, very you'd, basic. You didn't open the front door and let the, the mailman come back and talk to you back in the bedroom. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, come on. The murder will generally follow some sort of argument. Uh, Gia Cologne says, I call it the homicide triangle, love, money, and drugs. Those are three things you can jump off of from an investigative standpoint, though an argument can be about anything. Oh, yeah. And why don't people just divorce if they're so unhappy? That's, it, yeah, that's the, that'd be the more sensible thing. Yeah, that's a question I think a lot of people have yeah, in these situations. Yeah. Uh, Gia Cologne says that he has found that men find it difficult to face the financial losses that come with a divorce. Yeah. Spousal or child support, sharing assets, you know, all that good stuff. He said, quote, they don't realize the wheels they set in motion when a guy kills his wife. They think they are going to get away with it. I would tell a husband, you're the first person we're looking at. Mm-hmm. So again, just reinforcing like, yeah. And that's why there's so many of these you, you, we see, we watch, you know, podcasts. We, 
Yeah, yeah. And it's like, how do these guys think that this was the solution? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And, you know, it it, it always cracks me up, too, because it's like, how would you consider your marriage? Oh, we get along great. And then, right. then, you know, they, they talk to somebody else. He's like, well, you know, he's dating this lady on the side. Well, it, you know what I mean? Right. Right, right there, you're screwed. Yeah. So uh, here are some other cases where wives were killed by their husband or partner. Okay. So here on our screen, this is Carol Damati Stewart. Okay. In 1989, Charles Stewart, the manager of a Boston area area. Furrier? What is a what is a furrier? Uh, do they do stuff with like freight? F u r r i e r. Am I a complete moron right now? Boston yeah. area furrier. I think it has to do with like logistics. Hang on. Uh, well, it says here a furrier is a person who prepares or deals in furs. Oh. So- so, literally, like fur coats and a, stuff. A furrier makes clothing and other items from the fur of animals. The word comes from the old French fur, F O R R E R, line with fur, or simply cover or fill with definitions of furrier, someone whose occupation is making or repairing garments. Okay. Made of fur. Anyway, there we interesting. Go. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so anyway, 1989. I was totally wrong. Charles Stewart, the manager of a Boston area furrier. Okay. And his wife, Carol, pictured here on the screen, mm-hmm. um, she's a tax attorney who is pregnant with their first child. Mm-hmm. They were returning home from a childbirth class mm-hmm. at a local hospital. Oh, yeah. According to Stewart's statement, a black man carjacked them and shot them both. Yep. I've seen this. I've seen, yeah. I've, you know this I, story? Yeah, I know it exactly. Okay. Yeah. Carol dies a few hours later. Oh, yeah, they, they shot her in the freaking stomach. Yeah. And he gets a little wound on the side. Yeah. Um, the baby, who's two months premature, uh, was delivered by cesarean section only to die 17 days later. Mm-hmm. Stewart's brother, Michael, came forward on January 4th, 1990, to admit his part in covering up the shooting. Shortly thereafter, Stewart's car was found abandoned on a bridge. His remains were found in the Mystic River the next day. Yeah. So this is another one where... He uh, you know, he thought he could get away with it. He thought he'd get away with it, and well, when and he's it, caught, he well takes it, himself out. Have you seen Have you seen this one? Have you seen anything on it? I've heard. I mean, I know I've heard of it. I don't know the so, details, but so, I've heard of it. So basically, he drove into a, a area that he wasn't sure where he was. He, you know, when he when he called this into di- to nine one one, he didn't know where he where he was. So he he there was no street signs supposedly. And he, he he wasn't from the area, so he didn't know where he was. They got lost, I guess, driving home. Okay. So uh, the way they found him and his wife well, was uh, they listened to the police. The dispatchers listened to police cars in the background, and they're like, "Hey, I hear I hear sirens. Everybody, turn your sirens off." And they would go car by car. Car one, turn on your siren. Nope, not you. Car two, turn on your siren. Nope, not you. And they finally found. The siren that was closest. Oh wow, that's that's crazy. That's how they, that's that's how they found him. Yeah, yeah, because this guy was giving him no info on purpose. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, because he's wanting her to bleed out. Yeah, he wants her to bleed out. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's how they found him. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a mess. You recognize this guy here? That's Drew Peterson. Oh shit! <laughs> God, that's uh. Next to him there in the photograph, that's Kathy Savio Peterson. Yeah. And in 2004, a few months after her divorce her divorce from Illinois police officer Drew Peterson. Yep. Who's the other one pictured there? Kathy was found dead in her bathtub. Her cause of death was believed to be accidental drowning. He got away with it for a while. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But when Drew's next wife, Stacy... <laughs> Yeah. Went missing in 2007. Suspicion fell Mm -hmm. on good old Drew here. Uh, Kathy's body was exhumed and showed signs of a struggle. Drew was indicted for her murder in 2009 and convicted in 2012, receiving a sentence of 38 years for premeditated murder. Stacy, who was 19 when she married 39-year-old Drew Mm -hmm. and had two children with him, uh, has never been found. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, that's right. She's 
I forgot about that. Which that's what's great. And this guy was a Illinois. He was a police officer yeah. in Illinois. Yeah, he was a detective. He was a detective, wasn't he? Yeah. So he knew what he was doing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. Lori Sora's hacking. There's a picture of them here. She's cute. Uh, She's goofy looking. Hacking from Salt Lake City went missing at age 27. Her husband, Mark, notified authorities. Mark Hacking was charged with first-degree murder on August 9th, 2004. On October 1st, Lori's remains, two teeth and a piece of bone the size of a quarter, were found in a landfill. On October 29th, wow. 2004, Mark pleaded not guilty to first-degree murder. On April 15th, 2005, he pleaded guilty to first-degree murder in exchange for prosecutors dropping other charges. So he put her in the trash. Yeah. In 2005, he was sentenced to six years to life, the maximum the judge could give under Utah law. Before she went missing, she told family members she was pregnant. Wow. In 2006, Lori's law, increasing the minimum penalty for first-degree murder conviction, was signed into law in Utah. Good. Which makes sense because that's six years to life. Yeah. The maximum? Yeah. That, that seems no a little... Sense. Yeah. Yeah. But if something... You know, oftentimes we have these horrible tragedies yeah, and which, something good which, comes yeah, out of it. Something them, good comes out of it. Which is this Lori's Law in Utah, which yeah. upped it. Yeah. Because I think everyone recognized well, that's Stupid. shitty. Yeah, what's up with that? Well, it's just like a lot of... A lot of I mean, um, a lot of states didn't recognize the baby being killed. Right. I mean, it took a long time before a lot of states ratified that and put, you know, as an actual charging yeah. game of felony. Yeah. So... This here is Latoya Figueroa, F-I-G-U-E-R-O-A, Figueroa. I think I'm saying that right. My apologies if I'm not. You're not. I don't know. I'm probably not. Yeah. Latoya was five months pregnant when she was found strangled in Philadelphia. She was reported missing in July 2018. I'm sorry, July 18th, 20, 2005. What is my issue tonight? I don't know. Um, a bit more than a month after that, police arrested the father of her child, Stephen Poaches. 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 In 2006, he was convicted of two counts of first-degree murder for the deaths of Figueroa and her unborn child. Bloggers and critics felt that because Figueroa was Hispanic and African-American, her case received less media coverage than other cases where white pregnant women were murdered. And I remember, um, I remember this case being discussed because of that, mm -hmm. you know, it was a big, I think that was a big catalyst for that whole movement of like, oh, yeah. well, yeah. how the hell, why, why is she not getting any media attention to help solve hers? You mm -hmm. know, uh, it's just like the whole, I mean, off subject, but it's just like the whole tribal women that are. Yeah. Which, we which said we, we were going to talk. We need to look into that, but supposedly that's a big issue that never gets talked about. But anyway, that's all like I said, that's a different topic, but we got to look into that. No, we definitely will. Um, do you have any idea what time it is, Mike? Oh, time to play. That's right, baby. It's Wheel of Death time. Did anybody get back with you? No. <sighs> no. Well, here's the deal. Wheel of Death. Let's show it real quick. Yeah, let's show it. Here is... The wheel of death. I feel like it's been a hot minute since this has been on our desk here. So this here is the wheel of death. You can sign up to play the wheel of death on our website to murdermorons.com slash wheel of death, or just go to the homepage and you'll see a wheel that looks like this. You click on it. There's a little sign up form there. Um, and we will randomly draw those people out of the bucket of doom. Bucket of doom. Get it in the light here. Yep. There's the bucket of doom where all the names go. Yep. And once we get people signing up, we'll draw a name. We'll get them on a uh, stream yard, just kind of like FaceTime. Yeah, so yeah. You, you can be on the show. We'll put your face up here. Put on you the right up there so everybody can see you. On the <laughs> make, sure you, make sure you look decent. We need a sign up there that says jump, two or more on Jumbotron. Yes. Across the top. There you go. On our 27-inch TV. Yep. And uh, you'll get to spin the wheel. You get to pick one of us to spin. We both have questionable track records at this point, I yes, think. I think so. Um, but what do we got on here, Mike? We got uh, a couple it, spaces say death. Yep, death, yeah, which obviously you know, we know what that means. Don't win um, anything. You can get some uh, shirts. There's hoodies. Sweaters, or, yeah, hoodies. Hats. Uh, hat. Oh, we got a hat here. If, there's the uh, Wheel of Death t-shirt if you land on that. Yeah. Which is the only way you get that is landing on the Wheel of Death. Yeah. Yep. 
Oh, I, and free. I can't and I can't even get it. I'm a <laughs> member of the fucking show. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Um, there's also, you could win a free membership, free yep. buy me a coffee membership. That's right. Which, by the way, this is a great little segue to mm-hmm. talk about that. Uh, buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons. Uh, starting at just three bucks, three bucks a month, we do bonus episodes. And actually, that is kind of the point. You know, if you've been listening or watching to the show, you know, usually we do a traditional, here's a serial killer, here's all the details, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. This one was a little more, you know, we talked about a couple different. Yeah, things and talk about stats. And it seems like a lot of our bonus episodes are kind of more that format. Yeah. So if you like this video and you want to see more like this one, um, we already have 10 bonus episodes available to our members. Mm -hmm. um, And you get access to those when you sign up to be a member. So check out buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons. Like I said, starting at three bucks a month, you get all the bonus episodes. There's, And if you don't want to become a member, you can still buy us a coffee. Oh, yeah. You can just do like a one-time, one-time little, deal. Yeah. Hey, cool show, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we need more. Uh, we mean, we, we need people to play. We need more people to play. Yeah. Definitely. I would love to have a bucket full of names and just every episode. Yep. We're playing the Wheel of Death because we like playing it. Yeah. It's fun. We do. Yeah. Unless I hit death. Well, so, little backstory if you're new to the show. <laughs> Mike, uh, Mike has a pretty terrible track record. I What did we get up to, nine in a row that were all death? It was seven. Now, not to discourage you from yeah, putting in. Th- this wasn't all with people playing. This was in practice. Yeah, and messing it was just with the wheel. messing around. And he just kept one after another. Oh, damn it. Let me spin it again. Death. Spin it again. Death. 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 But we have had some people. We've had someone win the Wheel of Death shirt. Yes, we we've have. had someone win a hat. Yep. Uh, have we had someone win a membership? I think we've had mm. someone... Oh, that was those are the two that we've had so far. We did the one, but she she uh, backed out on us, kind of. Which, oh, that's right. She didn't finish it. That's right. So we have had some winners. Yeah. There are real winners, and we will send you this stuff. Yeah, there, you can see it on some of our shows. Yeah, Let's actually, see the people who actually won. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, this was an article that Mike found A and E's true crime blog. Uh, this one was written by Maria Recapico. Hmm. Um, excellent article. There's actually, since we're talking about bonus episodes, there's another one just like this called Why Women Kill Their Kids. Yes. And it's written by the same lady for A&E's True Crime blog. Um, so like I said, if you want to see that one, which will be very similar to this one, it's one of our bonus episodes. So yeah. join on up and uh, start checking those out. Um, also, don't forget to like. Subscribe, Subscribe, follow, whatever your platform calls it. That helps us out greatly. Yep. Visit our merch store. Oh, I I almost completely forgot to. But yeah, I we know, go. Yeah, merch. and I'm wait, let's check I, this out. I don't have anything on. I, oh, I'm kind of weird. I? Maybe I got maybe I got the underwear on. Maybe you do. But maybe I don't. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, please. As long as you're on our website, to murdermorons.com, check out our merch store. Yeah, check it out. Uh, t-shirts, hats, uh, AirPod cases. We got all kinds of cool stuff on there branded with our logo and it, faces and stuff. It makes you look good. It helps us. Yeah. And really what it does is it turns you into a walking billboard. Exactly. So, I mean, don't only think about this as like, a, oh, they're getting a little bit of money off this, but think of it too, like kind of helping to promote the show. Like you're yeah, if you like the sh- Yeah, if you like the show, you want us to continue and, you know, because, I mean, we're doing this strictly... As a hobby. As a hobby, yeah. yeah. I mean, we we have grand plans of it being like our retirement plan. Yeah, yeah, down the road. We would down love to have it as a retirement. Yeah. So we could make at least what we made at our old job. Right? Maybe. Wait, what was it that smart? You're like, <laughs> you made a face like that ain't ever happening. <laughs> I mean, that would be nice though, right? Yeah, it would be. That yeah. would be an odd. I mean, that's a goal. We have to keep that as a serious goal. It, we it can is. get there, Mike. We can. We can get there. We could probably at least get to what we started at that job years ago. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I feel like we both started that job when the federal minimum wage was three twenty five an hour. It really feels like it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh God. Oh, man. Well, again, if you like this episode, remember to subscribe so you get uh, notifications yep. when the next one comes out. And uh, if you don't have anything else, Mike. Well, we, it, for you guys out there, if you have any ideas, uh, any stories you'd like to hear, Something different, you know, if you got some 
some oh, crazy thing in your area that you'd like us to talk about, well, just send us an email, let us know. And we're help, talking. Just yeah. put a comment. Yeah, like put if, a comment. Yeah. If you're on YouTube or Spotify right now, you can comment, comment yeah, your hey, idea. Yeah, I want to hear, I want to show on this. And, and we'll, we'll look into it. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah, we're always for ideas. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.